How much you're going to subtract? You know, eventually you're going to subtract something. Yeah. But how do you figure out how much you're going to subtract? Yeah. So thirty percent of three hundred and fifty. So point three zero times one hundred five. Good. So it was three hundred and fifty. It's on sale for thirty percent off. Thirty percent is one hundred and five. So it's on sale for one hundred five dollars off. So it's 350 minus 105. 245. 245. The cost, cost of that code is still too damn high. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably like that um, Calvin Klein or whatever. It's got it. Or it's else it's just some freaky 350 code that's in my imagination somewhere. I don't know. It better dry itself like that. Like back to the future code. Right. Drying. Or is that a reference? Too far gone. <laughs> All my references say all over. Not everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people. Yes. Not yet. Evil like that. Yes. I have to practice final exam that I'm going to give to you guys. Let me give that to you right now, actually. How many questions are we going to have in the final? Considering that we only get two hours for the final, it can't be any longer than a normal test. It's just going to cover everything. So I got a lot of a big pool of questions I could pick from. You just never know what's going to end up on it. But it can't be longer than one of our normal tests. Yeah. <coughs> Sean Hicks is doing my old job. I used to do the coordinator. I was the coordinator for the Math Study Center, and I would send emails out to students selling them when workshops were happening. So you guys might have gotten a workshop, uh, an email about some workshops. Oh, the workshop. That's right. It's a review. I got an email. Yeah, I got Sean. Sean Hicks. Yeah. He's the coordinator for the Math Study Center. The final hours we were going to say, right? The test hours? Do it again. It's on the syllabus. It's not going to be exactly the same. I think our our starts at seven thirty. It's on the Ah oh, yeah, it starts at seven fifteen. Seven fifteen? Even even better. Here, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is it. This is gonna be the test. Only one side. Why? Oh, yeah, guys, so this is one side, but notice how there's no room. <laughs> so I just did that so I could print it out very quickly. And also because then you can just kind of do it and redo it and just keep this alone so it's kind of easier to relook at a problem but let me suggest to you if you do a problem more than twice don't just stop don't, don't do it right just go find another problem like it because then you'll start to know that problem you won't know that kind of problem so you gotta be careful about falling into that trap uh, so I'll have the answer key for this um, next time They're due by June 6th from me, but I turn them in normally by the next evening after we take the final. I like to have mine graded quickly so my summer will start sooner. Considering I'm teaching summer, my summer is now a week long. Yeah. I did change that though. No, I didn't. That's right. Um, so what's going to happen is next Tuesday, of course, is the next test, test four. 
Next Thursday will be review for the final. Next Thursday is the last day of class officially, because then the next week is final exams. You don't, you don't, you don't have class. <coughs> on Tuesday we have the test, and oh. then on Thursday we have the review for the final. That's the last day of class. The twenty third. Because then the next week after that will be finals, mm -hmm. and our final is of course on the thirtieth. I had a question on. On the final, on K, so when you go straight, like, do the uh, square root would be uh, 5 square root 4 minus 3 square root 7? Except the square, root should, square root should be gone. Oh, oh should be gone. The square root of 16 multiply. is 4. Okay. Okay. Would you multiply? So it's just order yeah, operations. Okay, yeah, okay. The square root would be 4, yeah. and then you go on the 5, though. Yeah, so it's 5 <laughs> times the square root of 16. What's well, square root of 16? 4. So it's 5 times 4. So, 20 minus so uh, the, really, at the part of this whole yeah. thing is you're just replacing a harder thing with an, a simpler thing. Square root of 16 is also known as 4. Yeah. Well, I can do 5 times 4, so I'm going to rewrite that as 4 and then do it. Right. I can't do 5 root 16. I don't know what the hell that is, but 5 times 4 is 20. That's easy. Do the same thing with root 49. Well, let's stick with right now. Maybe put that away. <laughs> let's stick with getting ready for the next test. Right. So let me give you the answer key for that practice test here. We'll be able to use our calculator. Yes. Um, on this next test, you can use your calculator basically everywhere. You just have to show me. On the final, I'm going to have kind of two parts like I did before. Yeah, yeah. So you will be able to use your calculator on most of it. There'll be a small, small part where you can't. John, just kind of go off your question. Square roots yeah. are in the same order of operations as exponents. Yeah. You'll learn in the next class that square roots are actually special exponents. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I managed to increase the size of the Math 90 summer class. So I think did it roll? In? I guess it rolled you guys in. Good. Yeah. Uh, you're asking for too much now. Yeah, yeah. And then I have a morning class. You record your class as well? So are you only, I'm mean, a bar in advance, are you only teaching, you didn't teach Math 90 this semester, did you? So is that going to be the same next semester as well? You're only teaching this summer? You mean in the fall? Yeah. In the fall, I'm doing an 88, a 175, and a 180. Yeah. Not that I'm stalking you or anything. Or anything. <laughs> it's not by any means. But yeah, in the fall, I do have the fall schedule. I don't think it's out officially yet, but I have the math fall schedule. So if you wanted to talk about math 90 teachers to take, possibly, I can give you some ideas off the record. So if you get like 1.112, you get to the first fraction, can you do 1 over 12 over 100? You get 1.12? No, the decimal is 1.112, 1, 2, I mean, 1.12. Can you turn that fraction as 1 and 12 over 100? Yeah. Instead of uh, what you put 112 over I like it. Which is the same thing as 100 times 1 is 100 plus 12 is yeah. 112 over 100. You don't take either or? Either or. So you guys have anything you want to focus on, look at? You guys can pick up on, I don't think I said this officially, but you need to know those area formulas that we talked about. Area square, rectangle, circle, trapezoid, triangle. You need to know those, have those memorized. Okay, cool. Should we write it again? Yeah. So we got 
area of a rectangle, length times width, right? Area of a circle. That's the neat one that they actually have in the book. That was really impressed that they have it in there. So remember that was pi r times r, so it's pi r squared. Area of a triangle was what? Half. Yeah. Base and height. And how are the base and the height related? Let me see if you guys can answer the question. How must the base and the height that you're using in that equation, how must they be related? It's a very strange question, but... So what's the difference between this triangle and this triangle? So let's say this is 4, 5, 8. Let's say this is... Let's make this a real triangle. Let's say it's 3, 4, 5. Now let's say this is 3, 4, 5. Which one of those can you actually do the area of, and which one can you not? The top one. The bottom. I like it. So you sort of answered that two-part question. The top one you can do, and the bottom one you can't. But it's how is the height supposed to be related to the base? And they have to be perpendicular. It's got to be straight down. So this, I can't use that. I would need to know this, and they haven't told me that, the bastard. So I can't do that area. So it's a... This area I can do. You guys with me? So the, that height that I use must be straight up from the base. It must be at a right angle to the base. So if I give you a triangle like this, I better tell you that height, or else you have a legitimate complaint. Jeff, do you have not given me everything I need? Maybe, maybe, maybe. But if the dudes didn't give it to you, it's accurate. They don't give it to you. It's evil. If you're in a higher math course, then you actually learn how to figure that out. You, you could possibly even use the Pythagorean theorem to figure that out if they give you a little bit more. I'm not going to take it that far. Don't freak out. And then uh, area of a trapezoid. Uh, it was sort of like triangle, except it has two bases. So one half, base uh, one, base, 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 base yeah. one, base two, times nine. And the age can go wherever the hell you want it to go, but it's got to all be in there. So I like to think of it like that. A trapezoid looks like a triangle that's had its head cut off. It's got two bases, so it's the same exact formula as a triangle. It just has both bases in there. Really cool way to remember it. Even a cylinder. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, the volumes are extra credit. So if you want to memorize the volume formula for a cylinder, that's just a circle times the height. Then you have like for a box, <coughs> that'd be length times width times height. Then they have some more volume formulas, but it's up to you if you want to memorize those for extra credit. What's the last one? Sorry. Length times width times height. The really cool thing, real quick, since it came up, remember the cylinder was the area of the base times the height for a box, rectangular box. It's the same thing. It's the area of the base, length times width times the height. That idea of area of base times height carries out through a lot of shapes. As long as that shape is repeated, you see if I cut this down the middle, it's still a circle. Mm -hmm. Cut this down the middle, it's still a square or a rectangle. rectangle. You with me? So as long as that's a repeated shape, take the area of the base, the area of the repeated shape, times the height. Again, that's extra credit. Can you do one sample of the truck sign? Sure. Yeah, so this stuff, Extra credit. Uh, trapezoid. All right, let's do this kind of thing. So, the first question would be what's the perimeter? And the second question would be what's the area? Just to warn you guys, I like doing this kind of problem where you give me a shape and I ask you those two questions. What's the perimeter or what's the area? Perimeter, you add, be careful about them all. When you say all, what do you mean? The outside. Yeah, not the internal. You have some dude walking around your little trapezoidal shape building where you hire somebody to walk the perimeter. So he's going to walk six plus nine. So that's 15, 
Let me get these, uh, let's say this are feet. Cool. So it's 15, 20. 32. 32. So it's 32 feet all the way around that building. How do I get the area? What, what's the base one? Uh, nine. And what's base two? Twelve. And what's the height? Four. So once you identify those, you just plug it out. Area is one half the sum of the bases. Twenty-one. Yeah. Base one plus base two. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Times the height is four. So, can you get to that part? Can you take half of four and then yes. one times two? Yes. Well, let me make sure everybody's good. Are you guys cool with that? So I just plugged in one half, base one plus base two, base one plus base two. How do you tell what the bases are? They're the ones that could be the bottom of it. You can turn this thing over. I wouldn't want to set it on this thing because then it might fall over. So these are the bases. The sides that are parallel are the bases. Yes, you want to do like the? Yeah, like both. No. no. Where are you? So the area is forty-two. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, eventually, yeah. So we'll add them together. You can, but that's more work than you need. Oh, okay. But if you don't remember that formula, you certainly could do the area of the triangles. In fact, let's do this. Here we get. Now John's question is, do I have to do half 21 because that's a gross number? Well, you can do half of 4. You can multiply whatever order you want to. Or well, we can just do... Half of 4 is... 2. Times 21. 42. 42. What's the units? Square. Feet squared. Feet squared. Square, square feet. But when you get to volume, it has to be cubed, right? It has to be cubed. I can cover a floor with little squares. I can fill a room with little cubes. That's why units are squared in area. Unit is cubed in volume. Cool. Yes, I did. So, um, Bella's question is: If I found the area of this triangle and the area of that triangle, they better add up to be that, because that's where this formula came from. And sure, what's the area of this triangle here? <coughs> this first triangle. It would be half the base times the height, right? So it'll be half of twelve is six times four is twenty-four. Twenty-four. This one would be, it's still got a height of 4. Half the base times the height. So half of 4 is 2 times 9 is 18. What's 18, 18. plus 24? 42. 42 is the answer. Yes. I was thinking here for the longitude. It says extra credit, right? Is that what you said? Yep. Okay. Cool. The homework, the same way. So the homework questions that deal with volume, those are extra credit. Yeah, I did. I had that. Cool. Do you have to do what I just did ever? No. You have this formula. That formula came from the idea of adding those triangles together. You do not have to do this, but if you forget that formula, you could actually go ahead and add the triangle areas together. It's always weird it's always videos next door. Yeah. What class is that? It is. Let's all watch videos and have our teacher get paid for watching as much videos. Okay. Anybody else like if their stuff back? Let's see, you got some.
Is there anything else you guys want to focus on? A problem that said change these two fractions into percentages. Second. So these are two separate problems. I want to change that fraction. I'm not sorry. That's only two percent. Change that fraction into a percent. Change that fraction into a percent. Forty. What's the main difference between the approach you're going to take on these two? You actually take the same approach on both. Uh, here you've got to do what? Change it to 100. Can you change 8 to 100 easily? Well, no. no. Yeah. So I this one you've got to divide. Yeah. This one you could divide if you wanted to, but there's a much quicker way. Because the bottom can become what? 100. It can become 100 easily. So then what percent is that? 40. 40%. Well, it's already out of a 10. It's already... Because you're you're already kind of thinking ahead that you have to add a zero on to make it over 100. So you're basically doing this, you're just not doing it as explicitly as this. So if you saw this and you put 40 percent, you're fine. You're fine. Um, on this problem, though, you have to do the division. A decimal first. Yeah, you got to make this into a decimal first. Zero is eight Yep. So if you do this work, eight seven. Five, cool. So what would it be as a... 87.5%. Good, 87.5% because it's got to move back twice. So All right. So fractions, you could always divide, but if the bottom <coughs> becomes 100 easily, that is a lot easier way to go because percentage means out of 100. So if I can make it out of 100, I do that. Does that make sense? I mean, that's... A lot of us kind of freaked out when on the quiz I gave like 4 out of 25... You either have to divide that, or the better way to do it, you multiply by 4. That would make it out of 100. Unreasonable expectations all the time. Oh, yeah. Belief that the bulls could actually be the keeper. Oh, keep one? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's pretty much almost a given. But. I'm going for heat. Huh? I like the heat. You do? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like Lakers mostly. Oh, boy. Pacers are going to take it percentage. Huh? Pacers and Grizzlies, I'm calling it. 
That would be different. That would be fun. That would be awesome. I would take the pizzas, though. When's the last time the pizzas? I don't get the grizzlies. I used to dip grizzlies. Last time pizzas were in the finals. I don't think pizzas ever made the finals, right? The finals? I was basketball. Because I remember they've only made it to the. East Conference with the Yeah, with with Reggie Miller and the Lee. Yeah, I'll watch football. College football. Yes, all the way. What was your team? I've been watching that Stanley Cup playoffs. Oh yeah, you like the NHL. I just never really got into hockey. I got into hockey. A little bit uh basketball. My parents are not big basketball. My brother was. My brother was. But I went to NFL, baseball, NHL. I don't, like, I don't like soccer. I watch soccer. Oh, dude, I, always, I always go for like George when someone's playing, except when they yeah. play Florida, I go for the Gators. But, uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, this works that way. They're all just with that. I just love numbers. Ohio is good, too, man. Ohio State's good, too. I don't get the bar. The biggest team was Alabama. So, guys, I had a question about uh, after this next test, I'm going to give you an updated grade sheet summary. And this time it's actually going to say what you will need on the final to pass. Yeah, but we just lost uh, Ingram with the... Uh, ACL, but they're thinking of picking up a Dwight Reed. I know. Ingram, yeah, I heard about that chart. Practice, torn ACL, man. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. I can't even imagine yeah. how he feels, man. He was a rookie last year, and then look what happened. He's a young one. Yeah. That's like, that's like eight months. Over a year. At least. How bad you tore it. My dog actually had that. She had, it's called CCL, and a, and a dog, canine crucial liquid. Australian cattle dog. Really? She had both knees that she had. It took her out for over a year. Yeah. But now she's like jumping around, it's crazy. <laughs> she's got titanium implants in there. It's, it's, I call her my X Man dog. Uh, when you do the word problem, to watch the difference of a number. Four, Are you looking at the final? <laughs> I'm already done with the test. That's why. Yeah, so you got to write that as an equation. So you're doubling what? Two and. How many cents is that out of the you're doubling the difference. So you have to write the difference down first so the and then double right, that. Four and so two minus that. Six, no, over. Well, how would you write it? So what's the difference? Uh, N minus four, and two outside, four. outside, so the two and then N minus four in parentheses equals so four. Good. Is that yep. how you do it? Yeah. It was negative four. Yeah. The difference, the difference. So you guys, uh, how's graphing going? Everybody doing okay with graphing? I like it. Normally graphing is like right behind word problems as far as hated stuff. I really don't understand that because it's not. If I knew graphing before I learned like land navigation, Oh, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wait. On the practice final? Yeah. I could. I, I, you should only be looking at that final exam review if you're completely ready for this next test. And I don't want to really go over the final exam review too much because there are people in this class currently that need help to get ready for this next test. So if we could focus on practice test four or questions from these last few section chapters. That would be good. We'll have a full day of final exam preparation next uh, Thursday. Yeah. on number four, and it says that uh, last year 
or whatever it was, 2009. There was 499. Alright guys, it's a good question because it's kind of a two-step problem. If I said, what percentage of men are in this room, what's the first thing you have to do? All right. No, how many people are in the room? But then if I say the percentage of men, what goes on the top? If I say the percentage of men in this room, the number of men. So if I say percent men, you have to have men out of the total. If I say percent decrease, you have to have the decrease over the total. So my first step is, how much did it decrease by? I can't figure out the percent decrease until I know what the decrease was. Just like I can't figure out the percent of men in this room until I know how many men are in the room. Does that make sense? Yeah, so percent decrease. What did it actually decrease by? 89. It decreased by 89. Now the next question is, what the hell goes on the bottom? Beautiful. Because we're talking about how much did it decrease from this? to this. So 89 out of 499. How much did it decrease from this? So it's always over the original. And I just got to convert that into a percentage. Do the division and then move the decimal over. Is that cool? Is that all right? Yes, I understand. Yep. For number eight, where you make the table, you just, how do you decide to do which one, X or Y? Can you do either or? Oh yeah. You actually you can. It kind of depends on the way the equation's set well, up. It'd be easier to do x because it's, it's a hell of a lot easier to pick values for x. Yeah. Because it's already solved for y. So you can just pick how many how many numbers do you want? <coughs> At least three. Oh, so you can so negative one, zero, and one. And you could always do that. So it's okay. And then you just find for y and then you graph in and it's exactly. a perfect line. Yeah, it's gotta be. That's why you always do at least three points, because if you only do two, you might make a mistake on one, and you would never know. That third point's kind of like a checkpoint. <laughs> Let me ask you guys a question about graphing real quick in a different sort of way. Can you guys give me some answers to that? Just looking at it, don't have to do any work. What does this really say? Two numbers? Four. Add to be four plus four. eight. So it could be four and four. <coughs> uh, six Five. and two. Six and two. Five and three. Five and three. Or the reverse Seven of these, right? One. I can do negative two, can't you? Seven and one. You could do uh, negative three and eleven. Yeah, you can do long. Right, because eleven minus three would be eight. Yeah, I mean, of course, how long would this list be? So this is what I meant. This is what I mean when I say a graph is the quickest way to answer this kind of question. What are all the answers? There's a freaking lot of them. There's an infinite number of answers. Because I, I, I skipped, for example, 5.897. So then what do you add to that to get 8? You add 2.103. That would get you 8. Believe it or not. I don't want to use that. So when I graph this thing, 4, 4... Three, five, five, three, and so forth. That graph I just made is the answer, is all the answers to this question. Because when I connect the dots, I pick up all the points in the middle, like that freaky ass point there. But what's really interesting to me is that when you have an equation like this, it sets up a relationship between these two. So it should not be surprised that the picture is very organized. It's not just haphazard points all over the place because these two must relate in a very specific way. So the picture should have a very specific pattern to it. <coughs> this is just a straight line. We saw an example the other day when I start throwing squares in here, I get other patterns, right? And in fact, the other day, I was just with my pre-calc students, we were making pictures that look like what you get from a spirograph. Those equations are ugly, but it's the same stupid idea. I throw some stuff in, I get some stuff out, I plot the points, and I get this funky, I can get stuff that looks like, um, 
we can actually make a picture look like that. We can make, <laughs> turn this around, we call it the butt graph, actually. Um, this is called a cardioid. You can imagine why. Uh, you get all kinds of, of nifty graphs. Yeah. So if a parabola is like this, what's the other way? So these are both parabolas. Oh, they are. I yeah. thought it was different if it was the other way. If you have, I could have one graph that has kind of two, and that would be what's called a hyperbola. If you have two kind of a parabola looking dudes, and they're kind of facing away from each other, that hyperbola. All that kind of stuff. So I mean, this is just the bare beginning, but the basic idea of plugging stuff in, getting stuff out, and plotting those points, that carries, I don't care what funky ass function you're looking at, it's the same idea. The shape you end up with is going to be more and more complex. Because your relationships start to get more and more complex. But the idea is the same. And they're always just a visual representation of all the answers to the equations. Yes, sir. So, don't know we don't have dashed lines. Yeah, no dashed lines. Yeah. You might be thinking to like when I say x plus y greater than 8. Yeah, none of that yet. And you shade. Yeah, that's the next one. Yeah. Seven three a. So three a plus three a is six a plus three a is nine a. So seven of them would eventually get to twenty one a. turn in anything. If you never turn in the very first homework assignment, turn it in. It will be very late, but you'll get more than zero if you get enough of them right. right? If, there's, uh, if you didn't do quiz one corrections or quiz three corrections or test two corrections or whatever, do them. Turn them in. <coughs> they are late. You won't get as many points back as you would have, but you'll get more than you will if you don't turn them. And then all gets you ready for the final. Final's cumulative. It's going to have everything from the whole semester on it. Mm -hmm. So this is addition to Be careful. Yeah. This would be multiply straight across. Mm -hmm. You know, you can cross reduce first. But this, this nice. one, this before I can add fractions, I need... Mean, yeah, exactly. I have to add like terms. And they're not like terms yet.
because if I divide 18 by 3 and then multiply what I get by 3, it's going to divide by 3. That's a really easy trap to fall into. Um, well, be careful that she's negative 6. Minus 64 is negative 70. brains that end before you know. It's M and D as it comes. Yeah. Either one gets preferential treatment, but just as it comes. Um, <coughs> so 10 plus 10 plus 5, I like it. Yeah. Just that looks like me, but you, you know what you meant there. Right. Right. Cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't round too much. No, this is the Oh, yeah. I didn't know what to do. Sure. 